What is up? Welcome to another video. So as you know, because you watch all my videos, last year we hosted a mid-pond event, had all the homies come down, and started out the year with drifting. And we're doing that again this year. So this is why we need to move on to the Miata, because all this year I've had issues with my handbrake not working, and it's been very frustrating. I've tried a couple things and still couldn't get it to work consistently. There's probably a couple other things I could try, but at the end of the day, I need to go hydro in the future, so might as well go ahead and do it now. Because when I pull that e-brake, I want it, I want that motherfucker to work. I think it's really hindered me not having a working e-brake to kind of progress into tandeming, getting closer, and dooring people. The hope for this coming year with this hydraulic e-brake is to really start ramping up and driving aggressively. And I know there's gonna be some people like Cam that are gonna give me shit for going hydro and not staying streetcar and keeping the stock e-brake and all that crap. But with that being said, I am going to try to keep the stock e-brake. I'm going to try to figure out a way to drop it just for parking reasons, not for like actually driving with the e-brake. So that's one goal that you need to accomplish in this video. So let's dive into all the stuff we bought, go over everything, and then get the stuff put on the car. So to start things off, we got the Strewer Die rear knuckle. It has a dual caliper pickups. It also has a 30 millimeter roll center correction, which basically drops the knuckle about 30 millimeters, which is why we need this. Because once we have these installed, the stock BC struts will be too low and I won't have any adjustment to raise it up to account for that 30 millimeter drop. So we got these, they're just a little bit longer. Next, we have the Chase Base pull-up style Hydro E-Brake. We can also switch it if we don't end up liking this, but I think this will be more suited for me since I'm so used to pulling up on the stock E-Brake already. And then we have the Shure Dyes hydraulic E-Brake lines, just some cheap pads, cheap calipers, Timken wheel bearings, and then some hubs so I didn't have to worry about trying to mess with those hubs and the race and everything. So we got everything ready to go. The only thing we're missing is the energy suspension bushings that's supposed to go in here. Those should be here in a couple days, so don't worry about that. So the first thing I wanna do is get the hydraulic e-brake installed and also figure out what we can do about the stock parking brake to still utilize that. Let's get that seat taken out and then start diving into that. So I took the seat out, I put it back in to do some test fitting with this because after looking at the stock e-brake, it looks like it might be more work to try to lower it. Maybe we do another day, but I think right now to get us ready for mid-pond, I think we should be good to have it right about here, which it's really hard <laughs> setting all this up because this thing just like wants to fall over. But sitting in the car, you can see that we have enough room to grab it. Hoping we can kind of get it angled right about here. And we really don't have any worries about grabbing that thing and it should have enough articulation to come up. And I think, if I'm correct, that most hydros really don't have much pull. Usually it locks like maybe 20-30%, especially if you're thinking about like your brake, pad, brake pedal. You really don't push on too hard to really lock them up, so it should be good. I just gotta figure out a way to mock it up in position. Because as you can tell, like it's like... So, I'm thinking about right, right here, have it set in pretty level, and then boom! We should be good, and then if we need to park, boom. And then that won't be in the way. So here is the stock e-brake mechanism. And as you can see, there's like an indent made in the tunnel for it. So I first thought it was like on the side of this and I could just lower it, but that's looking like it's not gonna be the case. I could probably take this off and maybe make it shorter or fabricate it to sit a little bit better, but I think for right now, we'll just leave it and then try to get that guy sitting right about there. So the plan now is to get a plate cut that fits right here. I think I'm going to weld to the top side and then maybe make some gussets to weld to the bottom of the tunnel. So let's get this little bracket cut up.
got the handbrake all tacked up into position. I haven't added the gussets yet, but I just want to see how it all fit with the carpet and everything. So now let's put the seat in and see how it feels with me sitting in the car. So inside the car, got the handbrake ready to go. I'm sure that people will be saying that I'm gonna grab this while driving. Hopefully that's not the case. I think I've added enough room to be able to come down here comfortably. I mean, I might like hit my hand coming down, but I feel like, I mean, not looking. I'm, I'm doing pretty good at grabbing it right now. So hopefully in the heat of the moment will be good. Uh, the only really worry is this right here, like doing this, but I think if we add enough support down here, we should be good not to worry about it. If anything, we will add a spacer for this and just bring it up a little bit. But I mean, I think that is like a solid location. And then here it is from aerial. You can see how nice it runs along the seat. Then we also got all that cut, got a nice little room. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm sure there are people who are gonna all over it, but teach their own. As long as this thing locks up when I do this, I could give a crap less, so. Now let's get this thing fully welded in, get the gussets made, and then move on to running the lines and then doing the knuckles. So I had just beat this up to try to get this platform level, but then I checked it at the reservoir and it is not level this way. So I pushed it back down a little bit, got us level this way and this way. But this way's level can change because I can move this reservoir front or back. So I'm not worried about that one. It's this one I was more worried about. And I think this should be the spot that I'm worried about leveled because I want as much fluid in there and I want it to not be like odd, a weird angle and stuff, especially while drifting. So I think this is right, hopefully. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong though. So the next thing we need to move on to is getting the wheel bearings and hubs installed into the new knuckles. I was going to get a press from Harbor Freight, but as I was driving there, someone bought the press I needed and we're kind of weak out from the drift event, go figure. Typical Jared fashion. Uh, so my coworker lives right down the road who has a press and is going to let me borrow it. I don't know if I'll film over there, so we'll do some quick YouTube magic and get these things all set up. Well, he actually let me borrow the whole thing, so now we can record pressing everything into these knuckles, hopefully if it goes right. If not, then we'll do the little shake method and y'all won't see me screw anything up. Just kidding, let's get to it. Let's get that boy taken apart. Thank you. 
So the next thing we need to do is install these bushings inside the top part of the knuckle. Inside the bushing goes this little collar. The only issue is this cam bolt does not fit in the collar. And the reason we have a cam bolt at the top part of the control arm is we made these upper control arms adjustable so that I can get zero camber back here in the rear. And in doing so, we utilize a cam bolt to allow the knuckle to adjust in and out. So we need to take this collar, put it in the vise, find the drill bit we need to get this just big enough so that this guy can go in there and move freely. So we have the rear caliper put on. Now we need to bleed it. We just ran the hydraulic lines for both calipers. Ran through this little hole in the subframe. I made a bracket that gives a little flat spot for this T to mount to, and then ran the cable through the trunk. For some reason, Shore Die has a lot of excess brake line for this main run. For now, I just tried my best to take the longest route I could. Maybe later on we can get this thing shortened and then recrimped. To the handbrake itself, we're just going straight back following the gas cap and the hood latch. So now let's tighten all of our connections, throw some fluid in this, and then get this thing bled. Also a little incognito for the Allen heads that's holding the T up. about the Miata but this thing pretty nice. clips left off at but we got the handbrake completely in the car we got it bled and we've been on three test drives the first test drive it doesn't work at all really I also forgot to put the uh, axle nuts back on and tighten it so we got it back in did all that second test drive went a little bit better but still not grabbing so we got it back in here we bled it for like 15 minutes we got all the air out of it and it feels great it still doesn't really lock up the way I think it should but I'm gonna let a couple people that own hydros ride my car maybe drive it what they think but for the most part it feels really good and in drifting i think it'll it'll work perfectly fine especially with tandem and whatnot the main goal of this is to use with tandeming to get close to people i really don't see myself using it for initiation as much but we'll see for the most part i'm pretty happy with it it feels kind of lacking i guess is the best way to put it i feel like there can be a little bit more ingenuity with the leverage of the actual mechanism and maybe we'll change that with some of the stuff at work um i work with a couple of mechanical engineers and we have a laser and I can probably make something, but that's for a later thing. With all that being said, the dual cloud pair setup is done. Now we still need to do the shocks, as you can tell, which were jacked up, but we are um, pretty freaking low. If I'm a bed man, I bet you I can't raise those anymore. Maybe like half an inch, which is not going to help. So we got to do those struts before we go to mid pond. And also, after last drift event, my differential started leaking out on the concrete the next day after I parked it. So we got to pull this differential, reseal it, make sure it's not cracked or anything. Throw all that back in, then we should be good to go for mid pond. Let's take this back apart. Let's get the differential drop, get it resealed, get the shocks replaced, and then put it all back together one last time.
ladies and gentlemen, looks like we have our culprit. So first thing we notice is that this guy um, is not attached. I'm pretty sure it should be like up here and it should not move. Second thing, as you can see right in there is my pinion seal. That is absolutely foobard. I'm assuming it got messed up by this guy right here, but that's good. At least I don't have to take this whole shell right here apart. It's bad though, because I've never taken one of these apart and I know um, you gotta put it back a pretty proper way. I am not confident right now. <laughs> and we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We have about three days. Classic, classic Jared. Wish me luck in the comments. You know, y'all will see the ending, but may throw in there some, some good vibes for, you know, future Jared. Let's get this thing paint marked. Start taking it apart. Like I said before, paint pens are where it is at. A deaf necessity in the shop. So we're gonna do this right here. All right, just put paint all over this thing. So just in case we wipe it off, we have something to go off of. Let's see what socket size this is. Watch it be one that I don't have, which is looking like, damn it. <laughs> I have a 27 and then it goes down to a 23 and I'm pretty sure it's like a 26 or 25. As we like to say people for sake. All right, I will be back after I figure out where to go from here. So in the meantime, we can go ahead and get these guys replaced with these guys. First thing we need to do is measure since we are only replacing the shock. I would like to get this preload the same. So we're just gonna take a little quick little measurement. Looking like it's just shy of six inches. And the same for this one. About 12 and three quarters. Write down those measurements. The next thing we need to do to take this thing apart. Top head off. Pretty sure we gotta remove the dampener adjuster. Back on to Big Bertha. I got a 26 millimeter socket from O'Reilly's and it fits. So the plan is once we put it back on is to not go past this paint mark inside the threads. It should be pretty easy to tell if we go past it. Obviously this is not technical way to put it back together, but it should be good enough. It will get us in the ballpark of where it was when it was in the car. So also Tiller had the same issue with his and he took this guy off. If we have any issues then I guess we might have to get a whole new uh, diff or at least this part. But yeah, we're gonna take this off. I got a new seal. So we'll smack that guy on and then we should be good to go. Um, so there's this. Okay. All right, let's check the picture. I don't know, that seal ain't sitting right, but hopefully it don't leak. We'll find out. Well, the last clip we are putting the diff in, but as you can tell, it's not in there anymore. And there's a little spot of oil right there. So we snatched this diff out and we had to do some finagling with that seal as you can tell. With the seal in here, it was like able to move and do this. It wasn't sitting in there good. So I think when I installed it, it cut that back side that has the rubber on it. So when I took it back out, I used this guy to take that sharp edge off. I think it had a sharp edge from the old one just spinning around on it because it's a metal housing as you can tell. So I think it cut that open, and then when I installed this one, it cut the back side of it, which was not good. So it's not get a good seal. Regardless of all that, I lathered it with RTV, slapped it on there with it with all this thing up so there's no oil, and let it set overnight. And as you can tell, it's been sitting here for about four hours now, and there's no oil leaking, and there is oil in there. The reason I had to do this is that I got the last seal that O'Reilly's had at the distribution center, and I had to wait till Thursday to get it, and that's just not enough time. So this will do for now. I still have the other seal just in case this ends up failing. I've 
bring it with me, but I think we should be good to finally throw this guy back in there. Let's get it done. this exhaust now because the lines that we ran are getting hot <laughs> as you can see under here which I think I showed it earlier but we ran our lines because this is like the only optimal spot I could do I could probably put these lines inside the trunk but it's neither here nor there but this right here is getting hot because the exhaust runs through here so it's getting this portion hot so I'm gonna heat wrap it first and then maybe get some heat tape around the rest of this and then we should be golden. I might try to get a heat shield too, but for right now, this should be just enough for mid pond, hopefully, to get us through. All right, we got her all wrapped up. That should help a lot for mid pond. So while I was thinking about what I could do for like a heat shield, I came across the old heat shield that was for the actual muffler, the old stock muffler setup, and it actually ended up working. So let's check it out. So as you can see. This is a stock heat shield, and it's covered just about everything I needed. You got this line right here that's not covered, and then this part right here. So I'll probably heat wrap those, but this should do a majority of the work. I also, see those little rubber hoses? I added that to give me some protection from rubbing off that coating on that metal, which is, I had already started doing just from two runs. We just need to add just a little bit right here, and then we should be good to go. For the final touches inside the car, I got the center console installed. Cut it up a little bit to fit around the chase base. Now it's a little bit more cognito. And with that, that'll be the last thing that we're doing on the Miata for this video. Now we gotta load up and get ready for mid pond. If you watched this far, I really appreciate your real one. Leave a like, let me know in the comments you made this far. And like I just said, we're going to mid pond to do another week in the garage drift bash. And this time it is volume two. Stay tuned for that video. It should be phenomenal, hopefully, because I've gotten a lot of camera equipment to hopefully shoot some really good stuff. So looking really forward to it. Also, since we brought Justin on, I can focus on driving too and kind of help coordinate with him to get some really good shots. Again, stay tuned for that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment. Think about subscribing. I'll see you next one. Peace.